This is a book that's gained some hype. I don't know if it's because of the book itself or because of what House of X number two is doing. But what do we have to say about this, Jack? All right. So, yeah, I got plenty to say about this. First off, this book is doing extremely well. We're getting reports from retailers at this book. Again, it's Wednesday night. If you look on eBay, you're seeing sales of around six to ten dollars. Uh, so again, it's important to add that shipping in. You know, people aren't just paying that six dollars or five dollars that that you see highlighted. You're also paying that shipping. So that means a customer is willing to pay five to six. You see, I got to lean in for this one because it's serious. Brian's gonna have a link in the description of a video, another YouTube channel. Don't click it while you're watching this. Finish the finish the show. Take your time and go back. It's a great channel called One Minute Economics. And it's just going to give you a one minute. We're all cartoon guys, right? We're all comic book guys. It's going to give you a one minute uh, kind of cartoon on Pump and Dump. Why do I bring up Pump and Dump? Well, this book was the topic of conversation on our Facebook page. I am sorry to many of you who try to go on that Facebook page without having to deal with a lot of personalities, to say it nicely, um, on the Facebook page. But this book was being called out as a Pump and Dump book. And I don't know who people were calling out for Pump and Dump. There was a story about a, uh, uh, a LCS situation where a person walked in and bought like 20 copies off the shelf and nobody else got a copy. Again, that's going to happen. That's terrible. I hate when that happens. Um, I don't advocate you to like raid your LCS of copies. At the same point, it's not the individual's job to police that. It's the store's job to police that. And in this situation, an employee did it unbeknownst to the to the owner, I would hope the owner had a stern talking to with the employee and that that was handled. That's short. Again, we talk about short term versus long term for the store. That's that's not it makes no sense. But pump and dump is not somebody. I hate that term. I hate I, we hear it. Brian, God, eight years. How many times have we heard that? We, we, we all we ever hear is pump and dump. Yeah. To the powers of 10. Yes. Million. <laughs> right. It's once a week we hear pump and dump, pump and dump. No one understands what pump and dump is. Pump and dump is a scheme, right? It's a scheme where a person buys up a large quantity of something. You have to have a large quantity to execute a pump and dump. And when I say a large quantity, I don't mean 20. What do you think the print run is of this, Brian? 50,000 at least, right? You right. assume, right? Maybe 100,000. So somebody who buys 20 copies cannot physically pump and dump. Let's understand that. Yes, with a platform like CBSI, theoretically we could pump and dump right because we we have like influence we have a platform but here's why we can't pump and dump here's why cbsi could never actually pump and dump because to pump and dump something you have to talk about a book and you have to lie saying that i aka mr bolo believe in a book is not a pump and dump saying cbsi which believes in a book is not a pump and dump which we've never done because there is no CBSI. It's a, CBSI is a group of individuals who work together. Again, we're like Voltron. We come together and we form a, a, a media unit. There's no, no conversation like where we all get together and say, this is the book that we're promoting and pushing. Everybody says different things. You go to 10 different articles on comicbookinvest.com, you're going to see one guy who loves it, one guy who hates it, one guy who thought it was okay. You, you're not paying attention to think that CBSI as a brand is pump and dump and just because I like a certain book, I like G.I. Joe. I'm not pump and dumping G.I. Joe. I mean, I, I tell you something I believe in. It doesn't mean I might not be wrong. If I'm wrong about a spec, I'm not pump and dumping. I'm still just telling you what I believe in. And here's the thing. If we were to make up false news, like to, to pump and dump, you'd have to take a book like this and say, yeah, they're going to make a House of X number two movie. They're going to make a, a movie based on House of X, but it's going to be specifically about the characters in number two you know it, it would work better in this scenario with an indie book right like let's say show's end that we just talked about well i i heard a rumor they're going to make a show's end movie it's already in production i'd have to make that up to cause market demand here's the thing if i did that yes yeah, some other media might jump on and go oh according to cbsi this is what's going to happen but we got a lot of haters out there guys a lot of other people in the me a lot of other media sources a lot of other speculation websites, a lot of comic apps would love nothing more than to be able to debunk our story and go ahead and say, no, they're making that up or this is just not factually true. So it wouldn't work. It would, it would just make a fool out of us and it wouldn't be worth it for whatever short-term profits you think we're going to make or that you think anyone's going to make. To pump and dump, you have to affect the entire market of a book. 
or of any entity. It's commonly used in the stock market. If you've ever seen the movie Boiler Room, if you haven't seen it, I absolutely suggest you go see it. Um, Vin Diesel, Giovanni Ribisi, great movie. That movie is about pump and dumping. They're taking stocks worth nothing, artificially inflating them, making people believe that things are going to happen in the market that are never going to happen. They sell them at high prices. Then they leave the consumer who bought these things holding a stock, or in this case, a comic book, that they cannot sell at the price that it was inflated to. Just because somebody says they believe in a book, it's not a pump and dump because that's not happening. Just because some jerk walks into an LCS and buys 20 copies of a book because some other retailer says it's going to be hot or because some website says it's going to be hot does not make it a pump and dump. Please stop using that term in the comics market. I beg you because it is the most misused term. And if you don't believe me, please click in the description, click that video, get a quick economics lesson. It's one minute. It's one minute of your time. And, and this, these are the types of things. These sources are available to you. There's a lot of unscrupulous things that do happen in the comic market. But you have to ask yourself, are we, are we really talking about the right things? And that's the problem is then we can't address the issues that we really have going on in the comic market. We can't address the things that are really going on in the speculation market because people get caught up with this term pump and dump. In full transparency, yes, CBSI, we've heard those accusations for years. But it, this is why I'm talking about it. We laugh at that because we can't pump and dump a Marvel book. And in order to pump and dump, like even a small press publisher, like the smallest, like Mad Cave, we'd have to own like 40 to 50% of the stock of a book. Reach out to any publisher you want and see how impossible it is because their books go through diamond for us to order that many or acquire that many. Also, any LCS can order these books, so we have no control over buying up that many stocks. It's not like a, a, that much of a stock. It's not like the stock market where there's a controlled set amount of shares. Any book pre-FOC can be ordered as much as you want. So if you came here to watch me talk about um, Powers of X number two, and you're like, man, he's not really talking about Powers of X number two. I'm sorry. But obviously, pump and dump is something that is heavily talked about in our market. It drove me nuts today getting into this debate on Facebook. I got to stop debating with these people on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so that's my uh, my little economics lesson from AKA Mr. Bolo talking about pump and dump. And Brian, I'm sorry, I won't take any more of uh, Simpleman's Comics time to discuss this. We're all good. You mentioned Boiler Room. Great movie. <laughs> I'm good at what I do, Dad. I'm good at what I do. I love you.